although I may have only three minutes, and the message is big, and the crowd is pretty tired. So I want all of you to stand up right now and shake a little bit all the good news, the bad news, the different news that we had heard so far, because otherwise you're going to sleep and I'm going to talk about something that I think is important and nobody listen. So let's shake up our hand, turn a little bit all around, don't fall like I almost fall, and wake up. Because what we're talking about is something should be uplifting, energy. And energy is the one that makes the change around. And we make, be able to make changes in all those places that we've been told. Are we all up? Are we all ready for the change? Okay, let's go and sit down. Because there, there is something that I want you to know. The jaws has was only a fabrication. He was much of a fantasy as Superman and Spider-Man. But instead of creating as a hero, he was created as a monster, as a man-eater. Actually, it is the great white shark. You see, in order to take this picture, it was in 1982, when I was down in South Australia together with Dr. Sil Dr. Eugenie Clark and David Dubillet from National Geographic. But in order to get the shark to the camera, we had to put bait in the water. Everybody put bait in the water first. It is already an abnormal situation. But then, in order to get the shark coming out of the water, we had to lift the bait in order to have the shark leap and creating this image. Again, abnormal situation. The picture went to a stock photography. And then the desire was to move the bait in order to create more an appealing image. Ten years later, one morning, while I was still living in New York City, all the buses and the phone booths was covered with this image. Discovery Channel decided to use the image for their own promotion of the ever popular Shark Week. But look what they've done to the picture they actually distort the composition of the original picture to actually to benefit their own income and to get more people looking at the image. And actually, this is how a killer was made. And there is no such thing a killer shark. For 30 years, I've been traveling around the world, searching encounters of all kinds of big animals in all those places as you see the camera coming about. Anywhere from the high Arctic the all this time the concept was to be in a company of, big, of the ocean giant. What, I, what I've created is an anthology of years of having fun, pushing the envelope, photographing on the edge of wilderness, comfort and common sense and bringing images like here, like of the polar bear, or the narwhal, leopard seals in Antarctica, and the um, beluga in Russia. The great white smiling, this is Bruce. Everybody remember? And of course, orcas. There are no such things as killer whale. Those are orcas. And of course, also anaconda, 24 feet long totally peaceful in the water. But not just anaconda, also crocodile. We can swim with them because they hardly feed underwater. And of course, humpback whales. Last but not least, the largest animal ever been on our planet, more than any dinosaurs, is with the blue whale. I've taken with me people all around those places. I share with them my knowledge and my experience. Always the focus was on dispelling the myth of the ocean giant. During all these experiences in the ocean, I learned one very critical thing, and so are my friend learned that, that the enemy of all fear is knowledge. The enemy of all fear is knowledge. What's happened is during all these years of adventuring around the world, I've also witnessed to something else probably as important or as critical. And this is the rapid development 
of the imaging technology, such as of all the IMAX 3Ds and all those new cameras that we have today. At the same time, I've discovered something else very frightening. The rapid deterioration of the present of the, wild, of the big animal in the ocean. The convergence of these two opposing forces of the, of the uh, accelerating uh, imaging technology and of the declining wildlife in nature propelled me to create new and education project, introducing I'm sorry, the images not follow up together with me. And I forgot how to press the bottom to show you the relationship of the animal with the people in the water, but introducing the Ocean Giant Legacy Project. What is the Ocean Giant Legacy Project? It's practically <coughs> a project that extend, will extend for the next five years. It is a mission. Researching and photographing, documenting the ability of human to interact with the wild animal peacefully. And what makes this project unique is the fact that we're going to introduce and to meet over 35 of the ocean giant and to be with them in the water and to photograph them, bring data from the right, present time anywhere in the world where they are now. The team will be led by myself and by a world-renowned filmmaker, as well as in, we'll be inviting researchers from other parts of the world that spe spe specialize in particular part or particular animal or particular ocean giant. We also will be supported by a handful team of assistants. We will work anywhere from the high Arctic to Antarctica and every ocean in between. what is likely to be or creating probably the most richest comprehensive collection of images, still motion pictures, still motion, motion pictures and, um, and data that exist in the world, that does not exist yet in the world and only by being there, seeing that and bringing it back home. I envision at least six television production as a result of our work. But in addition to that, I propose creating a mega coffee table book that will be one meter by one meter or three feet by three feet for the highest quality money can buy, photographing the big animal on 365 pages that will be actually a monument for those big animals that live on our planet. I invite you to be part of the legacy project and I want you to be as inspired as I am Open your mind, open your passion, and open your pocket, and participate, and join me creating this legacy. Be part of this history making, because it is timing sensitive issue. The time is now to be able to make the change, to make the change for us, for our children, and for theirs, because what we have now may not be last for very long. As Dr. Sylvia Earl said about two years ago, the next 10 years are going to be the most important for the next 100 years. Thank you very much, all of you, and my girlfriend, Blaze, that helped me to put it all together.